So now that we understand the general setup, we're going to specialize and determine exactly the behavior of the problem where we have two variables, x1 and x2, and we want to maximize this function, f, subject to an equality constraint, h, x1, x2, is equal to some constant, right? So essentially we're going to maximize this on some level set of a constraint function. And there's a very nice geometric picture. And it'll describe to us exactly how we should proceed. So we've got some constraint. So let's say it's a nice linear constraint, just to, to write it down, but this is generally the case. So this is the space, or the set of points, x1, x2, is equal to c in the plane, say. Well now I'm going to get, look at level curves of f, right? So this is a level curve. I'm gonna look at increasingly uh, higher level curves, right? So I'm going to increase the, the values on the level curve. So say this is a 1, you know, or this is 2. And I keep doing that. Well, if I keep drawing these pictures, I'll notice that if this curve passes through the space, right, if, uh, if, it, if it hits there, if it passes through, then I'm not going to be maximum there, right? So I keep going up the curve. So this will be 3, 4. So the maximum is going to occur exactly when the level curve of f kisses the constraint set, the, the, the set that satisfies the constraint. And so what does kissing mean? This means that the optimal point is where uh, the tangent of h of x1, x2 is equal to c, right? So the tangent is parallel to the tangent of the level curve of f. That is, the tangent direction here should match up with the tangent direction of this level curve at that point. So that the, they, should, they should live along the same line. So, well, if the tangents of... So I'm looking at this and I've got two level curves really, right? I've got the level curve associated to the actual maximum, right? I've got the level curve associated to the actual maximum, and I've got the level curve that's defined by my constraint set. I've got two level curves here, and that means that, well, I have two parallel tangents, right, is the same as saying the gradient at that point of f and the gradient at that point g are parallel since and you should recall gradients are orthogonal to the tangents. So those were the tangent directions, and so that means that my gradient of f at that point, we'll call this x star, y star, my gradient 
should align with my gradient of this function h at x star y star. And what does it mean for two things, two vectors, right? These are two vectors, and what does it mean for these two vectors to be parallel? Two vectors are parallel if and only if there is a mu some real number such that the gradient of f at this point x star y star is equal to mu times the gradient of g at this point x star y star this is great this encodes exactly what we want for our necessary condition right this encodes exactly that condition in a nice simple equation this is a necessary condition so right, let's write this down this is a necessary condition for x star y star being a max of f on g of x y is equal to c. I guess we started off with uh, x1, x2, but I guess we've, we've switched over to x and y now. So that's my fault, but let's keep going. This is great. So now that means that essentially we have three equations and three unknowns. So I'll, I'm going to write down exactly what those equations are, right? So this is actually um, this is actually a vector, right? So this is a these are 2D vectors. And so the first entry of this guy is df dx at x star y star minus mu uh, and this should be an h, right? Our constraint function is h. Uh, d h, since mu is a constant, dx x star y star is equal to 0. df dy now at x star y star minus mu dh dy at x star y star is equal to zero. So these are these are the constraints implied by the gradient of f is equal to mu times the gradient of h, right? I'm just splitting it up into the two components. And also I have this uh, this equation h of x one x two minus c is equal to zero. Well, this is just a system of linear equations. Well, not necessarily. This is just a system of equations where I have three unknowns which are x, y, and mu and if I have three unknowns and three equations I should be able to solve the system generally and this this makes it really simple so suddenly I've turned what looked like a very complicated system into just having to solve these three equations. So let's uh, give an example of exactly how you can do all this. So example, so how, how does this work in practice? Well let's suppose that f of x, y is equal to x minus 1 squared plus y squared and we want to minimize this subject to the constraint h of x, y equals 2x plus y equals 1. So that's our constraint. Well, let's plug it into these equations. 
right? So that means that, uh, well, df dx is going to give me 2 times x minus 1, x minus 1. Then I've got minus mu dh dx, which will be 2. And that has to be equal to 0. So that was the, the first equation. This was me just plugging f, this f and this h into this equation. Now the second one, I'm going to take derivatives with respect to y, so I get 2y. And then here I'll just have mu. So minus mu, and that's going to be equal to 0 as well. And then finally, I have to satisfy the constraint h. Is it, h of x, y is equal to 1. So I've got 2x plus y is equal to 1. Well, this is now a linear system. right? So let's form the augmented matrix and solve it. Well, the linear system uh, in x, y, and mu is going to be 2, 0, negative 2, 0, 2, negative 1, 2, 1, 0, 2, 0, 1. So the first thing we do is we subtract off uh, 1 of row 1 to obtain 2, 0, negative 2, 2, 0, 0, 2, negative 1. Here we'll get a 0, we'll still have a 1 here, here we're going to have a 2, and here we're going to have a, so we subtracted 1, so we'll get a minus 1 here, correct? And now let's swap these two, for simplicity's sake. So then we have the system 2, 0, negative 2, 2, 0, 1, 2, negative 1. 0, 2, negative 1, 0. We're going to subtract off 2 of row 2. And we get 2, 0, negative 2. 2, 0, 1, 2, negative 1, 0. This gets killed. When we subtract off 2 of row 1, we end up with a negative 5 over here. Um, but a plus 2 over here. And so now, uh, now we can just do back substitution. So back solving, we have that mu is equal to negative two-fifths. y is equal to minus one minus two times negative two-fifths, which will give me negative one-fifth. And x is equal to 1 half 2 plus 2 times negative 2 fifths, which is equal to 1 minus 2 fifths, which is equal to 3 fifths. And so, and uh, you, can, you can show for yourself or you can just look at it, you'll notice that this thing is positive definite. Right, and therefore we conclude uh, we conclude that the point three fifths negative one fifth is a local min for this constrained optimization problem. So that's beautiful. What, what seemed like a really complicated system where we were able to turn into just solving a system of equations like we usually do.